Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Carlos and in this video we're going to be talking about why I'm in my old office and it's not quite as perfect as I want it to be, but that doesn't keep me from getting productive. It reminds me actually of when I first started my channel. I knew I wanted to create content. I knew I wanted to get into animation and filmmaking and all that stuff. So I started with an iPhone and a GoPro. And then eventually that grew into, I got a, a DJI Spark and then I upgraded to another GoPro and then I started collecting all this other stuff and now I have lighting equipment, I have reflectors, I have a motorized dolly because all the money that I'm making from actually creating and doing projects, I keep reinvesting that into all of my equipment so then that way I can just continue to get better and be more efficient and then take all of the proceeds from that and continue to reinvest and get better equipment. I firmly believe that not only my equipment is getting better, but my skills are getting better and I'm becoming more efficient. And that efficiency is just creating more time to be even more perfect. But the key to that statement is I get things Done. I work on my own YouTube stuff. I put it out there and I actually leverage that stuff. When I go to talk to clients and I'm trying to drum up work, well, I use everything that I create on YouTube as a portfolio to try to generate more income. When I started doing research for this video, I found an article or a blog post that I think you guys would like. This blog post was written by someone by the name of Rachel Watts. Her number one bullet point says, done gets results. So in the early part of this article, she talks about being in a community college and she got this assignment where she needed to write this paper and she did all the research and she did all the writing and everything and she tried to be absolutely perfect so much so that she handed in the paper late. She got 50% instead of the 100% only because she handed the paper in 12 hours late. And the good thing for her is that's a school assignment. If you are working in the professional industry, let's say you're working at a studio or advertising agency, but once you start working for these huge clients, what you're gonna find out is there's a lot of planning. Um, you're coming up with a timeline, you're coming up with a schedule, and you're trying to break everything down into more manageable chunks. And all of these chunks are also associated to a timeline, so then that way, we know for a fact that we need, let's say, for the first month of a project, we need these 20 very important things done. Well, all those 20 important things get put on a timeline and then everyone works on it. So then that way, you know the ultimate goal is going to be delayed or not delayed dependent on how much of these small chunks are done along the path. There's an old saying or an old adage, it's called Parkinson's Law. And what that basically boils down to is a project will take you as long as you give it. So if you have a pretty big project and you say you can be done in about two months, chances are you're going to be working and then eventually in two months you're going to be done with it. Whereas if you take the same exact project and say it's going to take you six months, for whatever reason the universe ends up delaying things or something happens to where it takes you six months or maybe even it's just your brain like you're super relaxed for four months and then for the last two months you're just sitting there really working super hard so to wrap up number one what you want to do is you want to have a project break it down into smaller chunks just to see how long it's going to take and then actually hold yourself to that timeline. So then that way you're not working on something and I don't know, years later, you're still doing things that you should have been doing years ago. You know what I mean? Let's move on to number two. Number two, she says, perfect creates paralysis. So let's go back to number one. Remember when we were talking about taking a project and breaking it down into smaller chunks? So when she says, perfect creates paralysis. What I think of is an old, it's not really a joke, but it's kind of a question. The question is, how do you eat an entire elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time. But the thing is, when you look at this elephant, there's this huge elephant and it looks like an insurmountable chore to have to go and eat this big, huge elephant. If you just 
grab a fork and a knife and you start eating the elephant one bite at a time, eventually then you'll eat the elephant. All right, let's go down to number three where she says, almost nobody will notice mistakes. I made a video where I had sea turtles and tortoises, but then as my voiceover was happening, the first part I was showing sea turtles, but then I switched over to tur tortoises, and in the voiceover I was talking about sea turtles. For the most part, no one cared. They just watched it, they enjoyed it, and they kept moving. There was a couple people who were very passionate about tortoises and sea turtles and everything, so they pointed out the fact that my description wasn't as accurate as maybe they wanted it to be. So I valued that opinion, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later too, like getting feedback from people. But for the most part, the majority of the people didn't really care. They were really into the story. They are really into the visuals. They are really into the film itself and not for anything, but I'm more of a filmmaker than I am a zoologist, so I do my best. I'm, I'm not worried about getting something absolutely perfect. If I'm messing up in filmmaking and I'm messing up like color grading and picking music and stuff like that, then okay, maybe you have a bone to pick. But the difference between a sea turtle and a tortoise, for the most part, not many people know, not many people care after being educated. Now I know, the next time I make a video like that, I know the difference and I know that people are watching for that accuracy, so it'll be one step closer to being perfect. Which leads us to number four. You can fix it after it's done, except on YouTube. Everybody who makes content for YouTube knows that you can take a video and create a magnificent piece of work and you put it on YouTube and if you find something that's incorrect or whatever, if you have a bunch of views on that video, you might not wanna take it back down. There's no way to take that video down and replace it with the same link and everything. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that everything is as accurate as I can possibly get it to and then I might even share that link or that video with a couple people just to see, get some feedback. But for the most part, I just, I create the videos and I put it up there and I try to do my best. Now this is where it gets cool. The more I work with my camera and all my hardware and even software, the more efficient I'm getting. The faster I can edit and the faster I can pick music and the faster I can do all of that stuff, the more time I have for research and making sure that I'm going the extra mile for for the proper information. All right, let's swing down to number five where she says, it shows you are confident. I have so much content now that when I go to talk to clients, I can go to my channel and I can pull up a bunch of examples of anything that we might be talking about that for their project. And not just that, my comfort level with software makes me confident. I know I can go and do certain things. My confidence with the software helps me get really creative with the hardware. So I'm willing to do a little bit more creative stuff with my hardware because I'm getting more confident with my hardware and same thing with the software. Number six, you're able to celebrate other successes. I'm just gonna read this one because I don't really understand this mentality. I am someone who loves to share. I love helping people improve. Able to celebrate other successes, that comes naturally for me. I love watching people succeed. I love watching people learn. I love watching people create content. She says, people who are perfectionists often have a lot of internal criticism towards those who complete projects. This happens for one of two reasons and they are both based on envy. Reason one is frustration that a lesser item got praise. I don't understand that mentality that just because you think you put in a ton of effort, you're, you're comparing yourself to someone else. Envy is just another word for hater. Let's be real. Reason two is that they are frustrated by their own inability to complete tasks, thus are jealous the other person does complete the task stop being a perfectionist, you could be creating multiple projects that lead to your efficiency and that lead to your confidence. When you focus on completing your own work instead of being the best, 
you learn to value the work others contribute. If you can get to the point where you are more efficient and you are more confident in your skills, other people aren't threatening. I don't, I don't understand this mentality, so I'm just going to keep on moving to the next one. Sorry. Number seven, you recognize the value of constructive criticism. I'm already used to constructive criticism because I went through art school and I, like I said, I worked at a bunch of uh, advertising agencies. When you get put through the gauntlet of an advertising agency, your work is displayed and so many people are criticizing your work and criticizing not in a bad way, but criticizing your work in a way to make the project that much better. So after years of getting my work beat up, I kind of just, you know, I, it just is what it is. Like, that's my work. Uh, as long as a check clears, mm, that money that they're giving you is basically compensation to let you be able to let go of, of that project. You have a lot of your skills and your talents and, and your time and your energy and all that stuff. You also have to be able to let go and let them take their project because they gave you money for it. Constructive criticism, you just have to get used to people telling you what they think and you have to then filter through all of that information and pick out the nuggets that are actually going to make your project better. Which leads us to number eight, you connect with your work. The science is not that difficult. You need to connect with your work so you can be passionate about the work that you're doing so then that way you can continue to do it. She says, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey to get there. When I was younger, I was on traveling basketball teams, I was on baseball teams, and all, I played all the sports. And for me, the normal season was always way more exciting to me than winning the championship, which might be weird, but like the championship always meant to me, well, that's it, no more basketball for the season. And it always was kind of sad for me. Even if we won the championship, I was still always just kind of sad that it was over. But when it comes to my work, I know for a fact that every project that I'm doing, I love doing it. And I'm putting 100% of myself into that project. When I'm working on this project, I know that my skills are going to get better. And I know that I'm improving. And I know that I'm getting faster. And I know that this film is going to be even better than the last one I did. So those are the things that I focus on. I focus on being a little bit better with the drone. I focus on being a little bit better with my cameras. I focus on being a little bit better in the editing room. I'm able to do way more research now. And I'm finding the, the flow. And I'm finding the process to put everything together. And every time I do another video, that process gets more and more efficient. But with that said, number nine, you recognize nothing will ever be truly perfect. It doesn't matter how hard you work on a project. It doesn't matter how long you work on a project. It's never gonna be perfect. And even if you think it's perfect, there's going to be people out there who don't. There's going to be people who don't even like it. For example, my favorite film, it's Disney's Robin Hood. I absolutely adore that movie. If you go to Rotten Tomatoes, they gave my favorite movie a 55%. If you do research on this film, you'll see people talking about how they recycled animations from Snow White and like the line work isn't quite right. And it, there's just a lot of complaints. To me, that's what makes that film perfect. The imperfections make this film perfect. For me, the voice acting is phenomenal. The art is phenomenal. The story is phenomenal. The characters are phenomenal. Even though there's a lot of people out there that don't think that that's Disney's finest work, it's still my favorite film. The Robin Hood film fed into some of the future films that Disney ended up working on, like Zootopia. Take a look at Zootopia, the main character of Zootopia, and then take a look at the main characters of, of Robin Hood. Nine reasons why just getting something done is way better than trying to make a perfect project. There was a story about a pottery class where half the class was told all semester long you're gonna plan on making a vase, I believe it was that they were making. 
they're gonna make a vase so they're gonna just plan and they're gonna practice designing and but they weren't gonna actually make vases the other half of the class they were told to just make vase after vase after vase after vase after vase after vase and then for the final class project they were told to make what they considered the best vase that they could possibly make. And I'm sure that you guys saw this coming, but the half of the class that made vase after vase after vase, all of those people ended up having better projects than the people who just sat around and thought about making vases. So that's my motivational speech for you today in this video. Don't be afraid to go out there and just use whatever you have. Go out there and start living your life and telling your story. And then come back here and you can watch all the tutorials that we have here on this channel that talk about animation, movie making, and all that good stuff. And that's what we do on this channel. We go out and we experience our lives and then we learn how to tell our own stories using animation and movie making and even graphic design and all that good stuff. So. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and send it on over to any of your friends who may be into animation movie making or maybe just need a little bit of motivation and, and maybe need a little clarity when it comes to actually making things. Just go out and do it. Just make as many films as possible. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you know anyone else that's looking to get into movie making, animation, even graphic design, send this video on over to them. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and you see the little bell right next to the subscribe button, click on that so every time I come out with a video, you'll be alerted. I hope this video finds you healthy and I hope this video finds you safe. I'll see you in the next video.